Okay, <clears throat> hopefully the audio here is good. This is going to be about shape design and I'm using um, uh, Glenn Friedman's photographs and as a Z Boy's book here so I just want to give props to Glenn and his photography because it's great it's great shape design he did a lot of black and white photography so this should be uh, graphic filled by the time we're done looking through it right so <clears throat> what I'm doing here is I'm creating the outlines to shapes now the figure is a bunch of little shapes but we could also encase the figure in an envelope and this is what the term is it's called an envelope where you create an outline that implies the points of the figure but doesn't necessarily follow the contours of the figure and that implied shape has its own space right that's the entire volume of the figure so that is one particular type of shape and here in the background you can see the full pipe has an outline around it and that is the distortion from a camera lens but that's another shape this entire space right in here is a shape and that leaves all of this over here is one large shape especially when we frame it now the thing you have to keep in mind is the frame because the frame is what tells you about your composition when you draw these things without a frame, you have no composition to reference from because you don't have a frame. And once you've framed something, then you have a place in space to say, from that corner to here, I have this much space. From this corner to here, I have this much space, and it diminishes when I get to this point right here. And then it grows larger over here. <coughs> And when I look at all of this, this is by no means the same scale as this or this. So what I have here is framed very nicely. This is your typical composition where every side has a diminishing volume. Smallest, middle, largest. And then our figure is off center from all of that and it creates an imbalance, which in this case is a precarious imbalance because the volume could drop this way. And when we look at the triangle, the triangle is definitely tipped in that direction. So we definitely don't know whether or not this guy's going to make it. But at the same time, that's what creates a great action shot. All the tension that's been created here. And then we have these excellent half tones right along in here and then right along up in here. And this one happens to group up with the figure and it creates a larger space. And what it also does is it creates a vacuum or it creates a certain type of adhesion to the surface. So we know this guy's gonna make it. He's stuck to the surface. All the values are helping make that happen. So shape breakdown wise, this is what we've got, right? We have a couple triangular arcs and then a big circle that's actually been cut into what could very well be a triangular shape. So it's a repeat of soft triangular forms all the way through the picture. Now what makes this such a dynamic photograph and what makes it work pretty well for what it is, um, one, there's this hidden passage that I don't think he he even realized was going to take place until after he photographed this, but the hair along in here and the hair along in here are repeated along in here and back in here. And there's this really nice kind of repeat texture taking place all over the photograph. We have shapes. Here is one back here, all along here. And then we have this edge across here, and so we have these really nice breakups of space. And then we have this cast shadow coming off this way, but it's pointing us right back to him because it's coming from him. And it's linking up with his trucks and his back foot that turns us back this way, and so does his board that links us around his head <coughs> into his hand. And then an implied line back here kind of links all of the pieces together and it's pushing him down in that direction but it's also forcing the board up in this direction a lot of dynamic tension happening here and then you have all of these lines that are sort of forced right into our character here 
and their radii, that means they're flaring out from an origin up here somewhere. And same with the lines back here on this palm tree. And then we have this really nice edge along here that kind of dips down one more time, almost like a wave, boom, boom. And you have this really nice graphic shape happening. There's an edge along the edge of the building here that points us right into our figure's face, and that is the focal center. And then we have this nice series of repeated triangles that create this awesome rhythm here. And even a curve back here. We have all these really nice angles, and they all create flow. All this dynamic flow, all this dynamic tension. Even the head of sorts is sort of like this wedge. And then the back is flaring, and you get this radii along through here. And then you get a reverse curve here. You get yin and yang here with this nice light and dark. And all of this together, even the secondary shapes, when you start to look at them, the difference between the ground plane and the trees in the background, and then again, some of the rhythms along in here, this sort of echoes this, right? And we get a play and a tension between the upper and the lower half of the picture. We have these really nice lines along the coping that points you right back into the character. And here I didn't really do justice. but And then we have this repeat rhythm back here. And then we have the tension up here, the reverse curve of that on the other side. So this diagram got a little crazy, but without the frame, you can see it's just a bunch of stuff. Now let's frame it right along here and here, the top and the bottom of the page, down along in here and along in here, and automatically our picture now takes on a different kind of dynamic. We have light and dark volumes, we have dark through here, one type of shape, and the shape goes from the edge of the canvas through this edge into the coping. That's one shape. It points us to this shape, a tension point, that's all dark, then goes through the figure, into the board, into the wheel, up through the middle of the figure this way, along the leg in here, into the head, up into the arm, and even into his hair. And we can't neglect the white sock. It's white, but it does have a shadow pattern to it. And then all of a sudden our figure has its own shape against everything else in the background that has or have their own values. <clears throat> this value back here is a grayscale value. So it is very different than our character. And while our character isn't completely dynamic like down here, where the light and the dark is more contrasty, it doesn't really matter because the entire shape together is its own dynamic. In the background here we have darker edges over here and over here and then they get lighter through here allowing the arm to really pop forward because of its own dark value and that kind of brings our character forward. And these bigger groupings, this is what we're talking about when we say your big shape design because why? It's framed and we can see how these things are spaced and placed in relationship to each other within a frame. You, if you don't have a frame, then it doesn't really matter how those shapes work. They're either just going to be nice looking or they're not going to be nice looking. The next problem here is a color photograph. And with color, obviously, sometimes, well, not obviously. In some cases, many people will not see this red shirt as a value. They'll see it as a color. If you really squint down hard and just look at these things in mass, you can see that this red is much darker than these white clouds back here. So this shirt, when shaded, should not be light, even though it is lit. And in video, of course, it's going to be a little bit brighter than what you see in, in the photographic print. But regardless, even these yellows here, they're going to be very vivid looking, but the result of that if you, were to sh if you were to shade it, it would be different than the background. <clears throat> when squinting, they might look similar, 
but if you make them similar in value, then they are a similar value. And this yellow is light, but it is not as bright as those clouds. Clouds typically, when they have a large mass, get whiter. And you can't darken a cloud in its whiteness no matter how far back it goes. That white is as white as anything is ever going to get. But without a tracing paper here, we can kind of start to see some shapes. Here's a big arc through here that separates this whole space up here from this lower space down here. This cuts this light triangle from everything else in that lower space. Up in here we have an arc that comes through here with a circle right in the middle of it. And not really right in the middle of it because the balance here is shorter from longer over here. So it's off center and it works nicely. If this were over a little bit more it would almost be a tangent where we look at it because there's this kind of balance here that's happened and everything else seems to be off balance just enough. It would stand out too much. This has an angle to it and that angle has a smaller angle within it making a smaller triangle right in here. Um, if you were to take this corner that meets the leg and that point right there then here's your larger triangle. This is how the perspective or the triangle of the object that you draw um, is in dynamic in relationship to the other objects in the picture and when you go to draw your comp composition if you start with this kind of a shape you can see right away if your angles are correct or if they're off the character if we imply or if we imply the points and we connect the skateboard to the character we go from this wheel through the foot over to the hand to the elbow around the back, from the hip, to the wheel, around the wheel, to the other wheel, and back again. So our shape is sort of five-sided. One, two-ish, three, four, five-ish. <laughs> so we have a five-sided shape in there. And that's how we connect all the pieces together. And we can see their lengths are a certain distance from the front end to the back end and that's how we measure the shape. We kind of, if we're implying these two high points then it's from here to here. That is the length of the shape. And then when I go from here down I'm going to saw those fingers off and disregard them for the moment because what I'm really trying to do is go from the corner of that knuckle that I measured to here and then from that point back to the skateboard, right? So I'm kind of doing this on one side this on the next side, this on this side, over here, and then over here, or I can say from here to here, and forget the curve, or from here to here and make it a curve instead of a straight line like all these other ones. We have the fences, and while we might think in our mind a fence is square, if you notice they taper as they go down into his figure. So the implied angle is actually something like that, right? It's an angle. It's an actual angle. And that angle meets at the character. So all lines are sort of pointing back at him, creating a certain kind of tension. And then we also have the curve through here, the curve through here, which is even more dynamic one curve, two curves, three curves, radii from the hand. So the hand becomes the pivot point where all of these things kind of striate off of. And then we have the curve out here that supports him, that holds him in place. So there's a lot of dynamic in here, including things like this little sliver of blue right in here. You could connect all those together and it becomes this sort of like thumbnail shape or crescent moon shape. And then back here, you have a curve that comes down along like this. You have a shadowy curve with a serration in it that becomes two triangle shapes. Shapes are everywhere. This little tiny dolphin-like shape can also be a half circle, if you think of it like this to here. You could connect this point to this point, to this point to this point, and you can see this negative space between the two clouds. You see, shapes go on, and on and on and on, but the shapes that you design in a picture, like this photograph has sort of implied within it, make it a good photo or don't make it a good photo, and that's what a photographer is going to look at. They might snap six shots all in a row of this sequence, but this one became the most dynamic because of how the shapes, the lights, the darks, and the colors all integrated together to create a certain dynamic.